Hello, my name is Eric Strand, and this is another Video Bits tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use MPEG Stream Clip to compress your video down for delivery over the web to a friend, company, church, client, whoever it may be. You need to get that file, your video file, as small as you can while retaining the best quality. If you've tried uploading just an exported file from your editor, whether it be Final Cut Pro, Premiere Pro, iMovie, that file is just going to simply be too big to send over the web. You need to compress that file down. An MPEG Stream Clip is a great program to do it in. It's free, works both on the Mac and the Windows platforms, and is a well-renowned option and tool in the professional broadcast TV industry. You'll see I have a QuickTime file on my desktop, and if I open that up, and I open up the info pane, this is a ProRes file. You'll see in the data size that it is 254 megabytes with a data rate of 198 megabits per second. Data rate is the key stat here. The higher the data rate, the larger your data size, and data size is simply the file size or of your video file. We want to shrink this data rate down and use a more efficient codec. You'll see that this file, like I said, is in ProRes. We need to use a more efficient codec and a lower data rate to shrink the size of this file down from 254 megabytes to a smaller file. So I'm going to go ahead and close out this QuickTime file, close my inspector, and I'm going to simply drag the QuickTime video file that you have into MPEG Stream Clip. MPEG Stream Clip is great. You can set an in point and an out point if you only want to do one section of your video. You don't have to compress down the entire video. You can just do a section that you want. For this, I'm just going to go ahead and select all. I'm going to go to File, Export to QuickTime. Under Compression, I'm going to choose H.264. This is the more efficient codec I was mentioning when we were looking at the QuickTime file. H.264 is the codec everyone uses to deliver over the web. YouTube uses it. Vimeo uses it. It is the delivery codec of the broadcast world. I'm going to limit the data rate here. Now remember, data size is a correlation of data rate. We want to limit our data rate so that we end up with a smaller video file, one that can be uploaded quickly, or I should say quicker than if you tried to upload your original uncompressed file. So I'm going to change this to from kilobits per second to megabits per second. I have a 1920 by 1080 file, as you see here. So for a 1080p file, you're looking at a data rate of anywhere from 8 to 10 megabits per second. So I'm going to go ahead and type in 8. And you'll see that the approximate file size is 11 megabytes. On the right hand side here, we have two options, multi-pass and B-frames. We turn on multi-pass and B-frames because it results in a smaller file with great quality. Multi-pass means that the program, in this case MPEG Stream Clip, is literally going to do multiple passes through your program, your video file, and decide where it needs to allocate more bits in case of action uh, sequences or sports or less bits in terms of talking head interview. This comes at the expense of a greater encoding time, longer encoding time, because again, the program is literally doing multiple passes through your video versus just a single pass and encoding it, but it re results in a more efficient compression and a smaller file size. B frames stand for bidirectional frames. They're part of the H.264 algorithms, I suppose you could say, and they result in uh, better quality of your file with the final file output. For our audio compression settings, we're going to choose MPEG-4 AAC, and then we're going to jump over to the audio bitrate settings. This is either going to be 256 or 128. If you have just talking head interviews in your video, you could possibly get away with 64. Remember, smaller bit rates equal smaller file sizes. I'm going to choose 128. Frame size, we don't want to scale our video in any way. We just want to leave it unscaled. Frame rate options, I'm going to leave blank as I want to compress my video in the same frame rate that we edited in. Now the interlaced and progressive options, I'm going to uncheck interlaced scaling because this movie is progressive. If your video came off of DSLR cameras, it's already progressive and you can just uncheck interlaced scaling. 
If you're trying to compress down old family home videos or videos off of a VCR tape or a mini DV tape and it's interlaced, you could choose the interlaced video. Now I'm going to go down to make movie, choose the location of where I want the movie to go, assign the name to your movie, and hit save. And you'll be able to watch MPEG stream clip go to work. Once MPEG stream clip finishes compressing, you'll see the newly created file in the destination that you chose. Now let's compare the two files. First, I'm going to open up the original file, open up the inspector. Remember, the data size was 254 megabytes per second with a data rate of 198 megabits per second. I'm going to close this original file and open up our newly created compressed file. You'll see the data size is 10 megabytes with a data rate of eight megabits per second. Remember, we assigned that eight megabit data rate in our MPEG stream clip options. And you can see that there is just very little visual loss, if any, in our video. And the video is now only 10 megabytes, which is gonna upload much quicker than a file that's 254 megabytes. Now, if you're looking for a service to upload your video, I recommend wetransfer.com. It allows you to send files up to two gigabytes large for free. You don't have to create an account. You simply add your file, type in the friend's email, your email and a message that you want, and you go ahead and hit transfer. When the file finishes uploading, the recipient gets an email saying, here's a link to a file that's been sent to you from WeTransfer. And it's great because it's free. You can go up to two gig gigabytes in size and you don't have to sign up. You don't have to create an account. 